How you doing? It's Andrew here. Today I'd like to teach you how to find the equation for a rational function with a given characteristics of a vertical asymptote being at x equals negative 1, a double zero at x is equal to negative 2, and a y-intercept at basically 2. All right, so the first thing is, what is a rational function? Now remember, a rational function is simply going to be a function where you have some polynomial in the numerator and some polynomial in the denominator. All right, so you have some like function of x up here, like you'd have some like g of x over, you know, I don't know, h of x. Okay, some functions. So the first thing I like to do is, is basically start with the vertical asymptote. All right, now the vertical asymptote always gives us an x value that the function cannot have. The function cannot have a negative one as its x value. Now it turns out the only thing that's going to make this thing do a wacky thing is if the denominator becomes zero. All right, if the denominator is a zero, well, we can't find a value for the function. It's undefined, right? You cannot divide by zero. So the idea here is that I have to create an expression down here. Okay, I have to create an expression that becomes zero when x is negative one. Now you might be thinking, well, I could, could, I could possibly create a whole bunch of things. Well, that might be true, but the most, the easiest thing to do is to just write this, x plus one, right? Because if x is negative one and you add one to it, that becomes zero. So in other words, the shortcut is basically just taking the x value with its sign and kind of just switching it there, all right, to find the factor. And that's all that there is. Then the next thing I'm going to focus on is the double zero. Kind of reminds me of roulette. But don't, don't gamble. I don't gamble. All right, it's a losing proposition. Um, so take risks, but don't gamble. So double zero at x is equal to two. Now again, the zeros occur, right, if you had a graph. That's a weird, weird. If you had some kind of a graph, the zeros occur where the function crosses the x-axis. In other words, they're x-intercepts. They could have said you have almost an x-intercept at 2, but it counts twice. <laughs> okay? Obviously, this is the correct lingo, and what I was saying before isn't really technically right. But I hope you get the gist. These are really just the x-intercepts. So I almost have like two x-intercepts at 2. Okay? Now, the zeros of the function occur when the function's value is zero, right? So in other words, this thing has to become zero. Now, the only way it's going to become zero is if the numerator is a zero. So you're gonna look at this identically to how you did the denominator, all right? So we have a double zero here, so it's gonna be x minus two, because again, if x is two and you plug it in, two minus two is zero, and that would give an overall result of zero to this function. But you don't have only one of them, you got two of them. So I'm gonna write it twice. Now you could have squared it instead, that's no big deal, but I'm going to write it twice, all right? And that's that. The next part then is going to be the y-intercept, all right? Now the thing about the y-intercept is we know the values of x, x has to be equal to zero, and the y value is going to be two, okay, or the function's value is a two. Right now here's the thing, so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the two and plug it in for your function value, okay, two, and then you're going to take your zero and plug it in everywhere you have an x in your uh, function there. So it's going to be zero minus two, zero minus two, all over zero plus one. And then solve this. But you're going to realize there's a little bit of a problem, right? This is just negative two times negative two. That's going to be a positive four and positive four over one. Now this is just two equals four. And you're going to be like, huh, what? That's not right. You're right. It isn't right, right? Right. So what we need to do is we need to add a coefficient in order to make this thing work. Okay, so when you're finding, when you're when you're taking into account the y-intercept, do exactly what I did, but just plug in a little coefficient here, a little constant, okay? Little, little constant. And now what, the jo what our job is, is we're gonna solve for that constant, right? So we'd have to divide four out from each side. So the constant is gonna be one half. C is one half. So basically what that means then is your full blown function over here is going to be one half times this whole thing. And that's it. I mean, the function's done. You can reorganize it if you like, 
right? You can foil the top, right? So the, the top is going to be x squared. Then simply just add these terms together. So that's a negative 4, slap on an x, and then multiply them. That's a positive 4. The bottom just remains x plus 1. And then do not forget your uh, constant in the front of 1 half. Okay? And that's the function. And that's it. That would kind of be the, the final answer. And you can also kind of, you know, you can use your calculator to graph it. So I'm going to do 1 half, okay, times. I'm going to open the parentheses. And now I'm going to do a, basically a double parenthesis because I need to make sure this numerator stays, right, or the numerator is in the numerator. So minus 4x plus 4. Close the parentheses, open them again. Do then x plus 1 on the bottom. Use those parentheses, close the double, and then hit graph. And this is now the function, okay? So let's see if this looks or approximates what we have over here. We need a vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative 1. So look. Boom, right? X is equal to negative 1. Okay, see how that's a vertical asymptote? And then it says a double zero. Now remember, double zeros happen when the function just touches the x-axis there. And it does. It doesn't actually intersect it. It just touches it. Okay, just touches. So that's a double zero. And then the y-intercept of 2. Oh, look, 2. Huh, <laughs> that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you can help us out by maybe telling some of your classmates, I'd appreciate it so much. Might even make me cry. No, not really. It takes a lot to make me cry. Actually, I remember watching Seven Pounds. You ever see that movie? Seven Pounds? Great movie, by the way. It's with uh, Will Smith, right? the guy that smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. Um, yeah, that guy. So... It was a great movie, though, um, but for some reason it really, I, I started crying uh, at the end where he basically, you know, sacrificed himself to make other people's lives better. Uh, so it was a great movie, by the way. So if you're in the mood to cry, watch Seven Pounds. Take care.